Today, I've built a simple employee directory application. The layout you see here is the way it looks in production. Now let's pretend I'm starting from scratch in a development environment. Look at what happens when I try running it without any users in my database. How would I handle a repetitive task like database seeding in Vault? I definitely will need some fake data when I run the app locally. One way to automate repetitive tasks in Volt is to write a runner script. Runners are a simple way to execute a Ruby script within the context of an application. This lets you keep your code base light and isolated. In our example, we're going to write a script to seed the database. Also worth mentioning before we start is the Faker gem. Faker gives you an easy way to fill your application with random data that looks real. In today's example, I'm going to use it to create fake names, emails, and departments for the users that we make. If you haven't used Faker already, I recommend giving it a try in your next project. The first step is to add the Faker gem to the gem file. As stated previously, we're going to need that to make fake data. While we're in the gem file, I'd like to point out that we're using Volt 094 Pre 5. This tutorial won't work on older versions of Volt, so make sure you're using the correct version. Now that our dependencies are set, we can create the runner file. I'm going to name this one seeds.rb and put it in the project root. If you want to put your runner scripts into a separate directory for cleanliness, that's a good idea. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to put this one in the project root path. Now that all that's out of the way, we can run bundle install to fetch our dependencies. Now we can write the seed file. I will first require the faker gem, since Volt does not auto-require gems the way other frameworks do. Then I will grab a reference to the user collection in MongoDB. Let's iterate over the collection 10 times. Then populate it with some fake data using faker. Lastly, we handle the success and failure cases. And I'd like to point out that database operations will always return a promise object because of their asynchronous nature. This is more important on the front end, but it's true in the back end as well. That means that we should always call fail and then for good measure. Take a look at episode 2 on the blog or the Volt API docs to learn more about promises. Now we're ready to try it out. We can type Volt Runner and then the name of the runner file. Or we could do the shortcut volt r. Looks like everything worked. Let's check the browser now. And just as expected, there's all of our data. We also saved ourselves the hassle of manually entering all of this data by hand. This is just one example, but there's countless of other chores that can be automated by using runners. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's lesson, consider subscribing to the Datamelon newsletter. You'll get bi-weekly updates about new volt-related content. Questions are always welcome in the comments section. See you next week.